Hi everybody. Good afternoon. I am sorry. I'm a little late today. So I'm showing up a little late because I'm yeah, I'm just like a few minutes late today because uh totally have a sick baby upstairs which is super brutal right now um, and she just woke up from a nap and she's got a pretty bad fever so I apologize if I'm showing up a little bit late for you guys I'm gonna be a little bit more whispery today because when mama's not there she's, she gets a little triggered so I'm just gonna chill hi Andrea so um, make sure you say hi and let me know where you're from. Oh, I know, right? Bad timing. It's like Happy Mother's Day. After Mother's Day, we had such a we had such a great day yesterday. And then um, Story, my daughter, she woke up with a fever in the middle of the night. You know how that goes. So not a whole lot of sleep, and uh, it's been a trying day. So. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to go through this a little bit quicker than I normally do, but I still want to say hi. I really, really can't wait to paint this super cute raccoon with you guys. Just going to get set up here. Harrison, Ontario. Perfect. Harrison. Harrison. <laughs> Not Harrison. Oh, hey, Nicole. Engage. I'm glad you guys are making it. That's so good. So this painting's awesome because it's only three colors. How amazing is that? Hi, Elise. Indiana, very nice. Melissa, hey, what's going on? Long time no see. Glad you guys are making it here. Oh, thanks, Katie, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Denise. Ella is excited to paint a friend for her fox. I agree. If you guys know me at all, you will know how huge of a fan of woodland creatures I am. Um, even when uh, I got married, I wanted to have like a woodland creature themed wedding. <laughs> it didn't happen that way. I got, you know, persuaded out of it, but I really love them. <laughs> Hi, Amy and Emily. And hi, Reese and Emma. I'm really happy you guys are here. Um, so normally, um, I, so this painting that I made here, first instinct is always to paint all the trees first and then I just paint the animal right over top. Um, I just wanna make sure I keep saying hi to people. Hey, Charlotte, yay. Oh, good, Anthony, I'm glad. Stoked. Stoked you guys are here. Torino kids are excited to paint. Oh my god, so many kids. Maddie, Molly, and Max. That's so cool. This guy's really cute. But like I was saying, normally I would paint all the trees on first and then I just paint this guy right over top because I want to save a little bit of time because of my sick child upstairs today. Um, I am going to use a colored pencil to draw him on first and then we can put the trees behind him just because I want to make sure that there's enough room um, and he's, the trees aren't wet while we're like painting over top. So I am loaded with my teal bluey colored pencil. So just make sure you have that. Um, you can also draw the raccoon on with a paintbrush too. That's not going to be a big, di uh, be blah, 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 a big deal. Um, but yeah, if you have a, pen a light colored pencil, that's this is the best way to do it. Yay, hi Monica and Easton, and hi Jim. Oh, good, this is a perfect nine month old grandson painting. That's awesome. Hey, Christine and Kendra. Can't wait to add these to our foxes, says Diane, that's awesome, yes. Well, it's gonna be this one next, and then the next one's gonna be a cute moose. Moosey moosey, so I'm really excited for that too. Um, hi Maggie and Claire and LaSalle. I am also ready to paint with you and we're going to get started pretty quick here. Just going to check and see what time it is. Okay, so we'll just wait a couple more minutes. Um, so we are going to draw the raccoon on first. So make sure you guys are loaded with the color pencil of sorts. Yay, Evelie. Beautiful name from Port Perry. 
Ooh, Lourdes. I love that name. <coughs> Beautiful. Yep, Norma Jean. So my plan is to have all these videos up until we're out of the weeds with uh, this COVID situation. Um, but I have a few things in the works to keep this paint party going. So stay tuned. I have a few little plans kind of kicking in here. And uh, yeah, the videos will be up uh, for replay at least until this is all over. So at least give you something to do until things go, until we have more to do. I don't want to start saying go back to normal because we all know that's probably not going to happen. Um, I don't know when I'm going to be able to paint in public again. I don't know about, you know, all the normalcies, but at least uh, when things start to merge into doing more things because it's going to be summer at least. And, um, and uh, yeah, we're going to at least be able to leave the house a little bit, which will be sweet. Really, really sweet. Um, oh, Seanigan. I love Seanigan Lake. I'm stoked that you guys are tuning in because, like, what time is it there now? Like, one? I guess this is a pretty good time to tune in, actually. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, I, I actually lived in Tofino for 10 years, so I am very familiar with uh, Vancouver Island. Hey, Deb and Brooke. Hey, Debra, <laughs> the other Deb. <laughs> All the Debs are showing up at once. What, what? <laughs> okay, so anybody who's just tuning in, I was just saying um, I have a pretty sick baby upstairs, so I am gonna pretty, I'm going to go through this pretty quick today with you guys. I know she's going to end up freaking out without me there so um just bear with me I have a little bit less sleep than normal and uh we are going to draw the raccoon on with a colored pencil to start so make sure you're loaded with the pencil okay hi Devin and Teresa I'm stoked you guys are here too hi Denise <laughs> all right so we are going to start in about two minutes I'm just going to take a little sippy poo of water The good thing is, is that we've been like, um, saving a special present for story <laughs> and my husband Jay was going to give it to her a few days ago. And I'm like, no, 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 you need to wait to give this to her until we have, we have the leverage. <laughs> and luckily, so if she starts freaking out, we have the leverage right now. Oh, Teresa. Ga Ganon Oak. Gannon Oak, Ontario? Cool. <laughs> hey, Danielle. Glad you're here. Okay, one minute and we are going to go. Oh, Deb, yeah, for sure. We are, it's only three colors today. So we have a teal and black and white. Because black and white. So we are going to um, be mixing gray today. That's probably going to be the hardest part of the painting today. Um, and my trees are teal. But honestly, you guys can make them whatever color you want. They do not have to be uh, teal, turquoise, whatever color you want to talk about. Uh, call it. Whatever you want to call it is up to you, but you could do blue or pink or purple or yellow or whatever you want because it's your world. And it's four o'clock. So let's get this party started. All right. Um, I'm just going to get right into it today, guys. So load up your pencils. And we are going to partay. I don't know why somebody showed the anger sign, but that always makes me nervous. <laughs> um, and I will apologize if my internet isn't amazing. Normally, I don't let anybody use any internet while we're doing this. But, of course, I have a fevering child, so she's on uh, hardcore Peppa Pig action right now. So what I'm going to do... Um, just to give you an insight, uh, we're gonna start with this little face. So you can just find the center of your canvas here. And depending if you have a long or skinny canvas, so mine is square. So one thing you wanna keep in mind, um, if you have a, a, like a longer, uh, more rectangle canvas, try and put him a little bit lower because otherwise you're gonna have like a super duper long body on him, which is fine. I actually really, really love how everybody's characters turn out because 
the best part about cartoons is they're even cuter when they're super wonky. So <laughs> embrace your uh, embrace your wonkiness, okay? <laughs> All right, just gonna get this a little adjusted here and let's get started. So what I like to do, it's kind of like this wave motion. I'm gonna start just over here and shoot. And I just hope for the best. <laughs> so, so the best part about just drawing it on and we're gonna color it, you don't have to stick to your like for sure like first lines that you make. Everything can be adjusted afterwards. It's just nice to have a good idea. So when we're putting our trees on, we have a general idea and we're not going too far into his fur. So on each side, I'm gonna give him kind of like a little mustachey. So we got a, a shorter, a longer, and then an extra short one here. And then these two bottom ones will connect from the bottom. So shoop, oh, and me. Just connect it there. And then his body's really easy because it's just two lines. Just go and and I hope you guys can see this. It is a light colored pencil. So just do your best. And uh, like I said, this is all gonna get colored in, but it's just really nice to know so when we put the trees on, it's all good. And then he's got an ear here. And I'm not gonna get too detailed. And a tail. So his tail starts at his body. And I go, I make a round line. And then I start to zigzag. So I zigzag down, then up, then down and up, down, up, and bring her on back down. There we go. So that's going to be our raccoon. Take a second. So let me just put these lines in here. And then once this is on, we're literally going to color him in so we don't need to draw in his face or anything. We're just doing this so that when we put our trees on, um, and I, like I said, I'm going to use a turquoise color, um, but you can use whatever color you want. All right. Get creative. I love, oh man, those foxes turned out so good, guys. I was so impressed by everybody's foxes especially the ones that made like the purple and the green foxes. There are so many different colored foxes and they all looked totally incredible. So bravo, my friends, bravo for killing it with the foxes. I can't wait to see these guys. Okay, so I have my, my big flat brush here. It's my three quarter flat brush and I'm just gonna take my teal and I always like to start at the bottom for some reason, but you can start wherever you want bottom or top and I use the width and it just makes space for my tree so I'm going all the way up and you can see I did not make a super straight line but you know what that's the best part about trees is that trees are not super straight up and down so we have a lot of leeway you don't get hard on yourself and be like oh no my tree is wonky wonky trees are the best kind of trees they are the Funnest to paint and the funnest to look at. So I'm just taking my teal and I just go back and forth a few times just to make sure all of my little hole, canvas holes are filled in. Now, if you're using a canvas and you're getting a little bit of dryness on the sides, just you could take a little extra paint or just put a tiny, 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 tiny little bit of water on my brush. So whenever I put water on my brush, I do a little dip in my cup. So I dipped in my cup and I just give a little tap on my palette first. A little tap on my palette first and then I cruise along these lines. Yep, so one thing I know for sure with um, these Facebook Live sessions is that uh, my internet's not amazing and I'm not sure anybody in the world's internet is incredible but it does get blurry sometimes, but it'll come back into focus, but you'll get the gist of things and we can still party together, paint party. Um, that's the one good thing. So I've been doing some private sessions um, via Zoom. I had a wonderful Mother's Day party yesterday. 
And um, so right now I'm just making some extra branches. So I like to get sporadic with my branches. There's going to be one over here, and then I'm going to put one going up here. <laughs> these guys, they almost look like cactuses, these trees. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to put one guy just right here coming up. Boop. And voila. And that's what I'm going to do for my trees. But like I was saying, I've been doing some private Zoom parties, and uh, they've been really, really sweet. Um, I think the platform on Zoom is a little bit more solid than the Facebook Live sessions. It might not take as much uh, data or, or internet. Don't take as much internet to uh, host. But I'm not a super technical person, so I'm not really sure how it works. <laughs> I just show up. Okay, so I'm just making some trees in the background here. So like I said, the first time I painted this, I actually painted the trees all on first. Um, so there's they're kind of coming out of random areas because I painted behind my raccoon and then I just painted straight over the trees after. Um, so I... Am just kind of gonna guess where my trees are poking out here. And uh, for the people who can't see what I drew on, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put these trees on. Hold on, I'm gonna put this tree on, and then I'll take my I'll uh, I'll take my colored pencil and I'll do another once over. I'll color it in a little bit darker. Hopefully that works. So I came along and I made this guy here. So I started with the curve and then he's got some cute whiskers over here. Here we go. And one round bottom of his head. And then he's got a couple cutesy little ears here. And then his body just shoots straight down. And the reason you probably can't see it very well because it is a teal pencil. So um, there's a good chance that it's a little bit lighter. But the reason why I use a light pencil in the first place is so um, if anything needs to be adjusted, it's a lot easier to paint over um, than if you're using like a a dark pencil. That's just something I learned in graphic design. And if you only have a regular pencil, that is 100% okay as well. So I'm just gonna make some fun trees kind of popping out over his head here. Some nice thick branches. Now, putting a tiny little bit on your of water on your brush um, is very helpful to kind of let your brush glide across the canvas. And then it also feels, makes, um, it a lot less dry when you're putting on your trees. So this tree is going to continue down over here and it's going to be nice and fat behind his head here. And I'm just going to, it's okay if you go inside the raccoon because we're going to color him in. Um, if you, uh, if you end up going inside the lines, that is totally cool. The only reason I put the thing on there first is so that we don't go inside too much because then we don't have to paint over it. There's not so much to paint after. I have to tend to my fevering baby upstairs as soon as I'm done this, so I need to get her done pretty quick today. Okay, so right there. Nothing's worse than sick kids, man. It just breaks your heart. It's so helpless. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do for my trees. So, okay, good. Uh, Veronica, yes, this will be posted after. And Taryn, you're welcome. I'm sorry that I didn't put it on darker the first time around. Um, and yeah, I think that's good. So, I mean, if you guys want, like you can put another tree in here if you want to. You know, you can put as many trees in there as you want. This is your world, like the great Bob Ross used to say. And I am going to let those trees dry up 
and I'm gonna put a little bit of white and black on my palette. And just remember, you don't need a whole lot of paint on your palette. You can always add more. There's no need to waste our paints, okay? And I'm giving my brush a really good rinse so that um, I can start mixing some gray. So I'm gonna bring this guy in for one second here. So just to show you, so we've got a couple different grays here. Um, we've got a lighter gray for his body. So we're gonna start with that. Then we just add a little extra black and we'll make his eyes there. Um, and then, you know, uh, it's light gray in his tail too. And then we'll let that dry. And then um, as we're letting that dry, we can outline him in black. And then when that's dry, we can color in our little white areas and then finish off his little nose and eyes and stuff. So that's my plan, Stan. All right. Um, so I'll show you how I like to mix paint. All right. So I have, I wonder if you can even see it. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I have a little white here. And I have a little black here and I like to make a little space in between so I can start bringing in to the center a little bit from each. Now I'll tell you what, black is a super tricky color so you really do not need a lot of it. My suggestion is take a big scoop of white and push it over. So I just pushed over that white. And then I take a tiny little corner of black at a time, just a little bit, and I start to mix it in there. And you'll see right away that how much the black takes over. <laughs> and I do want it to be, so I'll, I got one, two corners of black in my mixture here. And the one thing, I don't mix it so much that it becomes its own color. It's pretty marbly on my plate. That's because when we're going back and forth inside his little face here, it's going to mix while you're painting. So I just put a third little drip of black and that's going to, uh, I think that's going to work for me. Maybe four. Four drips. <laughs> so I did four tiny little corners of black paint and brought it into my big scoop of white paint. And I just go back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth. And I'm gonna to start to color in his face, the whole thing. And like I said, if it's a little streaky at first, that's okay. It's kind of fun to have streakies in his face because he's a furry creature. And, um, you know, fur isn't always the same color all the time. And I like to make excuses like that. So just keep in mind that, and the more you go back and forth on his head here, it's going to mix together and everybody's going to have a variance of the color of gray. So just mix up what works for you. Just remember that it does, you do need, you do need to get it a little bit darker in his face later. So don't make it too dark. Keep it on the lighter side. And it's the, I always say that. So if you make something small, you can always make it bigger. If you make something light, you can always make it darker. So that's a good rule of thumb whenever you're painting anything. Grabbing a little gray and I'm just filling in all these little areas that I drew in there already. And I always like to make choo-choo noises. <laughs> just helps me concentrate and get those lines in there. There we go. And yes, I'm coloring in the space around the edge and guess what I'm going to color all this the same color too what does this say turquoise was super hard to find these days I had to google how to mix colors and have green and blue to make it oh that's good yeah way to go way to get her done and yeah uh all paint is really hard to find these days um I have a supplier that I work through and I went to order a bunch of paints and I really wanted to like do a big order so I could help everybody get their paints and they just don't have like any white or black or turquoise or anything and I just feel really lucky that I have a lot of paint so I can get by but I am going to be uh, scoping out different sources um, so that I can stock up on some paints because that's crazy. I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong. 
I'm super excited that everybody's getting creative. Uh, it's such an eye-opening time right now. We get to kind of work on things that we didn't really get the chance to before. So how wonderful is that? But then there ain't no paint for me <laughs> or for anybody. So good times. Good times in that department. So I'm just filling them all in and I'm also going to fill his tail in too. All right. Keep on trucking in this department and um, I have run out of that color of gray, so I just go back to my palette and add a little bit of white and black together. And you know what? I'm not super picky, so even if it ends up being a little bit darker for his tail, oh well. I'm just going to go with it. Just going to go with the flow. Fill him in. And I just, I will apologize, guys, that I'm going to be going a little bit quicker today. Um, but I will be reposting this, so if you if you get behind a little bit, uh, you can replay this after. But everything's pretty straightforward, I have to say. So just to uh, review, we drew on our, <laughs> I almost called him a fox, uh, we drew on our raccoon. And then we painted our trees behind them, and now we have made gray and we're coloring them in. Easy peasy. Ooh, Jim, yeah, I know, I do need to hit up. I thought about that this morning with the Harrow discount. I'm gonna have to go hit that up. Good call, thank you for reminding me. Okay, so, <sighs> never hurts to give a little uh, blow skis on your raccoonie here. Um, but while he dries, I will show you guys again um, in my trees back here. I guess they are kind of kind of like uh, birch trees because they have these little notches in them. And I'm just going to take a little white and I'm going to make a bunch of tiny little notches in my tree. And you can use, um, I'm going to use like a long liner brush to do this. Um, or you can take like a medium flat brush and you give it a little, I just take my fingers and I kind of flatten it out a little bit so that it's nice and skinny. Uh, you can also use the corner of this, but I am going to use my liner brush and I'm just going to grab, grab a little water and I put it in my white just to loosen it up a little bit. Um, and then... I make tiny little notches in the trees. So nothing overly complicated and I don't do like a crazy amount of them. Um, every once in a while I'll make like a little X and just make tiny little lines in my tree back and forth. No rhyme or reason. They're not in any kind of like uh particular way or they're not even they just are and that's just one thing to remember when it comes to trees trees are very much like people they're all different and they're all beautiful in their own way nobody's perfect so we will just cruise along make some little lineys I hope my little one is doing okay. I don't hear any crying, so I think we're good for the moment. Here we go. She usually likes to come in and infiltrate my parties, but I don't know if that's gonna happen today. Okay. Choo choo. Pew pew. Choo choo choo. There we go. Tiny little notches. In all the trees. Excellent. <laughs> we'll like start David Attenboroughing my voice here. Funny enough, the wild raccoons are found in the forests of Essex County. <laughs> they like to call them trash pandas. <laughs> okay, guys, so I have rinsed my brush. Given this a little time to dry, it's not perfectly dry, but that's okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist over here for just a second. 
Okay, so whenever I'm doing any kind of outlines, I always like to give my brush a little dip in my water. And when I'm black, my outlines are usually black. So I just put a few little drops of water right next to my black just to kind of liquid it up a little bit. So I have this little edge right on the back. It's not the whole schwack of black, just over on the side here. I put a few extra drops of water just to loosen it up. And this really helps glide my brush along the canvas and helps make my outlines really nice and I get to make nice long lines. So you kind of avoid doing any kind of like short lines. Um, you can also use just a medium flat brush for this too, which it would be totally fine to uh, just work around the edges of your raccoon. But whenever I add water into anything, I always give it a little squeegee. So I'm getting it nice and full and I pull it and I twist. I kind of pull it, I twist off some excess. If I had a flat brush, I would just kind of drag it back and forth just to get some of that extra water off there. Trust me, it just, Anybody who listens to this does a really good job. So just uh, take notes. <laughs> Adding a tiny little bit of water into your black really helps your outlining process, okay? And that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. I'm going to um, start where we started. So on this little edge. Now, whenever I'm going in to outline anything, just because I'm going to, I'm going for this one little part right here, I get kind of shaky sometimes, so I really like to have an anchor. I put my pinky finger down. Just, I, now I'm like soft. I have like an, my hands anchored, not hitting any paint on my canvas, and it keeps me uh, nice and I feel like I'm not, a lot more confident when I have my pinky finger down. And I just hit that point there, and I got it. All right. And I'm going to cruise along his head. And I need more paint than that. So I'm just going to cruise along there. And the best part is, is anywhere the trees may have gone into his fur, you just make the black line a little thicker. You know what? It's all good. So I'm just going to take my time, and this does not have to be quick, guys. You can just take your time. Please don't feel like you have to keep up with me. I just want to show you the steps so that you can make your own raccoonies. I really want everybody to have adorable woodland creatures on their wall. I'm just going to fix this area up a little bit here. Got a little shaky, and that's okay. There's always room for improvement, so you can always go back over, take your time. And you know, sometimes uh, depending on which direction you're going in and how you are painting, um, it's totally okay to like turn around your canvas you don't have to have it straight on there if it's easier to get your hand to flow a certain way. Just uh, turn your canvas around to the way it's flowing the easiest. It doesn't have to stay in the same direction. All right, I'm really happy right now because I'm hearing story chatting upstairs. Chatting, that means that's a that's a good sign. Because when this kid stops talking, that's when I start to get really nervous. <laughs> so just fix up this bottom edge here. And ding. And then his ears are totally black with a white center. So I'm just gonna go around the edge first. Put the extra water on there. Go around the edge of his ears first. And 
and then I will paint the inside. So I'm going to paint the outline of the inside of his ear here. And then from that point, I can just take it and fill this extra area in with black. Now, if something gets crazy and the whole ear gets black, that's 100% okay too, because then you can just paint white right in the middle and it's all good. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. <laughs> Honestly though, my kid talks so much and then when she's sick and she's not feeling good and she's not talking, it makes me so nervous. Sometimes I'm just like, oh my God, I can't believe this kid never stops talking. But then when she stops, I'm like, oh no, something's wrong. So hearing her talk upstairs right now is a really huge relief for me. Yay. Okay. And I will be painting in his little body so I'll outline his body here all right so I hope this is working out for you guys um like I said at any time please feel free to ask any questions you can chime in anytime you want. And I'll be there to answer them for you. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. And I'm just going to keep on keeping on. So uh, we're just outlining all the outside lines of our raccoon right now. I'm not going to worry about his face right now. Just getting all those lines done. And the, the best part about the lining is if for some reason I'm going to be done before you're done, um, you can continue or you can just stop the outlining because this is something that can be done afterwards as well. Um, and follow along with the next steps. And then you can just make sure that you're, uh, you get your outline done later on which totally works too. Ta -da! Outline. Oh, look at that rock and stash this guy's got. Nice. <laughs> um, okay, so I am going to take my black and I'm gonna start to draw on some Nice burglar lines here on his tail. Uh, so what I like to do, um, the whole tip of his tail up here is going to be black. So I start right at the top, just so all of the spikies are, are actually black. I don't go too far underneath the, the lowest spike. So this is my lowest guy here. So I just kind of swoop right underneath that one. And then I'll color it. So this is the beginning to our burglar raccoon panda. All right. Burglar panda. I mean, <laughs> I meant to say trash panda, burglar raccoon. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm fine, I'm not losing it, it's all good. Okay, so from that point, um, I don't really put any restrictions on myself as to how many stripes he can have. You can put as many stripies as you want. Um, I try and make them as even as possible. So however big your uh, gray area is gonna be, I would just make the next line that big. So I go right around that same curve and then I try and keep it the same size. And just so my brain doesn't get confused, I just color it in right away. This is gonna be black. I'm gonna make sure that it looks stripey in the end. 
and you know if they don't all end up the same size that's <laughs> probably better probably better it'll look better in the end <laughs> okay just get this stripe on here so I'm gonna aim for three stripes and I might the last one might kind of go off the canvas but that's okay our buddy here goes off the canvas so it's all good <laughs> oh man I'm laughing because I can hear Story like getting excited upstairs, which makes me so happy. Um, Jay must have given her a present. She's been super into Spider Girl lately. Does anybody like Spider Girl? Um, on Disney Plus, they have all these Marvel cartoons, and this kid only watches Peppa Pig, but for some reason, she like loves the Marvel cartoons. Very night and day when it comes to uh, taste. But she loves Spider Girl, so uh, my husband got her a Spider Girl doll, like figurine. So she sounds all fired up. I'm sure he gave it to her. <laughs> you know how that goes. Um, okay, and then right now I'm just gonna make space in our raccoons to in our I'm gonna make his belly. So I'm just grabbing a little black, and you can make it as fuzzy or as crazy as you want. You can make it round or kind of rig random if you however you want his tummy to look so I'm gonna kind of give it just a little bit of a wiggle and I am eventually gonna color this tummy in to be white but that'll be after I want to make sure my black line is dry first before I do that here we go so this is just like cruising along, hey? I can see that I lost some folks, so I'm probably going too fast. And I apologize, guys. Um, I try and take my time on most of these, but today was just a special scenario with my, with my kid. Um, but right now, so what's going to happen right now is I'm going to mix a darker color of gray, exactly how I did it before, only I'm going to add a little more black than I did before. Um, and we're going to give him two fun eyes here. Um, and there's a, probably a really good chance that I'm going to go over this black area and that's going to be okay because, um, we can just cover it up after if any, the best part about having black lines surrounding your characters is that. If you go outside the lines in any way, you can just either thicken up the lines or cover something up. A lot of room for cover-ups in this department. So I have my palette here and uh, that gray that I made before is pretty, pretty gone. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that white and I'm going to take a scoop of black and I can see the color of the gray that I had before on my palette. So right over top, I'm just gonna mix a darker version of gray. And I'll know it's darker because it's right on top of the other gray that I already made. And I want this to be, you know, a, a significant amount darker. I don't want it to be, I want us to be able to see that he's got a different colored uh, area in his face. So I really wanna darken up. So I just take one little scoop of black at a time and I mix it with my white and just kind of swirl it in there. Now, even though I have a little bit here, I can just go to my cup of water. I do a little dip and I add a little extra water and that just lengthens. It extends the life of my paint. Um, it makes it go a lot further. So if you add a few little drops of water in there, that should work. Not too many. You don't want it to be crazy watery, but um, it just really helps lengthen the uh, longevity of your paint. So I'm going to paint his eyes on, but I'm actually just, just because uh, my brain likes it, his nose is going to be about here. So I don't want it to overlap too much. 
Um, and one thing I am going to do, I just bring my brush back and forth. I kind of sharpen it on the side of my plate to start. And I'm going to put one eye here. So his eyes start at the bottom and they go up, but they're a little skinnier at the top than they are at the bottom. So you can see there, I started here, I pulled up and over, but it's a little fatter on the bottom than it is on the top. And I'm going to do that on both sides to start, just so that I know that I have a relatively even, his eyes are relatively even there. Um, and you can always grow them from there. So one thing I like to always say is when you start small, you can always make them bigger. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this area bigger now. Because I started small, I could take a second look and extend the size of his eyes on both sides. So if you start big, it's a lot harder to make it smaller. If you start small, it's a lot easier to make it bigger. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do on both sides. So I wanna just make this a little bit wider up there. You can see I'm just, I'm pushing my brush on there, making sure that the edge of my brush is nice and still and just slowly make his little eyes here. And I'm using my medium flat brush for this, but you can totally use your big brush if you want to, or your liner brush. All good. And look, I went outside my line there, so that's something that I'm gonna have to fix up later. Bing, bada, bing, bing, bing. Bing, bada, bing, 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 bing. Just give it a little extra loving around the sides. Yeah, yeah, Panda. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make these kind of get a little bit closer in the middle. So there's always room to manipulate our little woodland creature friends and make sure they're, they're looking good. Looking real good, yeah. Okay, Parfemi's a me. He's got such a nice face. So, now that that's on there, gotta let it dry a little bit. Um, I'm gonna, I'm giving my brush like a super duper good rinse so I can take some white. So I'm just gonna, I have a little extra white on my plate here. You might need to squirt a little extra on your plate, depending on how much you have left. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna fill in his belly. And um, like I said, I really didn't want my paint to be wet on the sides here yet, um, but it might still be a little wet. And in the original, I to it totally was still wet because I can see that I pulled some gray in and that's okay. It's all okay. Cause every little, oh, there it is. There's that gray that I was talking about. <laughs> there it is. And all I do is give my brush a rinse. I'll grab a little extra white and kind of cruise along this edge again here. And voila, c'est beau. Julia. Now, um, because his eyes are still a little wet and we want to make sure we want his nose to kind of overlap in the center there, I'm going to take my black now and fix up some of the lines that I'm, uh, that need a little fixing up in. So I'm going to go grab my liner brush again and and you know, everybody's gonna have their own method to do this and you might not even need to do this. Maybe you're like the most, uh, you're way more organized than I am, which is 100% a possibility. Um, and everybody kind of does their own thing, but I can see there's a few little spots that I wanna fix up right now. So as I'm letting my paint dry right here, um, he's got a few little extra holes in his ear that I'm gonna fix up. 
And then I really want his uh, whiskers to be a little bit more pointy, so I'm gonna just make better little points on the ends of his super rad mustache up here. And then in his belly and along this line here, I'm gonna cover up some of that gray that went over the top. And that's the beautiful part about black. Like I was saying, it just covers it up. Gorgeous. Oh, I hear an incoming. Oh, that's great. Okay. So I'm making a nice outline around my belly. Hi, baby. Oh, that's the best news ever. Do you want to say hi to my friends? Okay, come sit on my lap. Yeah. All right, look guys, story feels better. Yay, can you say hi? Hi. We can't see anybody, but look at, oh my goodness. Look at that crazy hair. <laughs> I'm glad you're feeling better, baby. It must be the Spider-Man PJs. That's, uh, mm -hmm. that's gotta be some secret sauce action there. <laughs> Oh, it made me so happy to hear your beautiful voice, my I love. love I love you. I love you. Yes. Please give me hugs and kisses. Oh, I love you so much. Mwah. Okay, I'm almost done. I'll see you in a bit. Oh, oh, my heart. <laughs> so good. I was seriously worried there for a little bit, but... That makes me so happy. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> I know, man. Kids are so crazy. Okay. So I'm just fixing up some lines. And, you know, there's always room for fix-ups later. Um, now, it's going to be up to you. So I'm going to put two little round eyes to start here. I'm just gonna take my brush, and uh, he's gonna have two little round eyes right in the center here. Now, if you want your raccoon to be a girl raccoon, we did this with the fox too, uh, you can give him or her a little, um, some eyelashes, which is so cute. So I'm probably going to do that, but just for now, I'm going to leave his wee beady eyes there. Yay, so glad she's feeling better, my five-year-old daughter. Nayana says, hello. Thanks, Taryn. Yay. Honestly, I'm so happy right now. That made me so happy. It's the best. Okay. Mama feels a little more relaxed now. Okay, so... You can wait to put on his eyes. You do not have to do that right now. I'm just trying to get as much done as possible while I'm kind of in the mode. Uh, one of my rules of thumb that I try and follow, which I didn't follow so much for this painting, is whenever I have like one color on my brush, if there's any other parts of my painting that need that color, there's like, you might as well use it since you already have the color on your brush. There's no sense in washing it and then going over it again and washing and doing another color. So I just try and hit all the areas that need that color all at once. And it doesn't always work out that way. It's just something that I like to keep in mind because, you know, keeping, uh, keeping things efficient as good as possible. Okay, so this guy has a little round nose here and it's, it's round, but it's almost like an ovally shape. I'm going to use my medium flat brush, so I, I gave it a good rinse. I have my medium flat brush here, and I'm going to give him... So I go inside his eyes just a little bit on each side. And it's going to go all the way down here. So I'm going to overlap on top of my black just a little bit there. And 
This is going to be so cute. Then he's going to have his little black nose right in the center. So that's probably on a normal day. I would have made his eyes and nose at the same time, which is something that you might still want to do. Okay, there we go. All right, little white area. Just give it a few little swoopies. And you know, I always like to take like a co the corner of my brush and I, I just gently bring the, the side and corner along and it fills in some of those gaps and makes my line nice and clean looking. Just take your time. You can see like I, I go over it a few times. I don't expect it to all happen in one fell swoop. Yeah, Joe, thank you. I'm feeling better too. For now, anyways. She had a nice long nap, but she had woken up just before I started the party, so I was a little uh I was a little scared she was gonna freak out on me there. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is grab my liner brush again and I'm gonna finish off his nose. So take little brush and his nose is wider so his eyes are more round and his nose is a little more the same shape as the white part here so it's a little more oblong there you go mr. raccoon little raccoon come out to play you are so cute oh day okay all right that's a very adorable raccoon i'm just gonna give him a little extra little furry over here a little extra point and then i will go around and i'll fix up some of these edges just to make them a little bit more solid um along here anywhere you just go around your raccoon and make sure that those lines are all nice and finished up here and I hope that was uh, you know relatively not overly fast which I know it was and I apologize guys um, uh, but if you did it along with me and you completed it then you are totally rocking this process and way to go and if not that is so cool too um but the last thing i'm going to do so right now i have a boy raccoon because he doesn't have any eyelashes but what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my liner brush and i'm going to give this guy a couple eyelashes and you'll see all of a sudden it'll turn into a girl raccoon so I have my brush here. It's just my liner brush. I start inside his eye and just make it a her. So I flip up oh, one eyelash, two eyelashes, three. No, I'm just going to give her two. <laughs> and I'm going to do it over here too. So one in. It's just such a little flick, tiny, tiny little flick up towards the sky. There we go. I gotta fix it up a little bit. So that's how you go from boy raccoon to girl raccoon. <laughs> Eyelashes. Eyelashes is a big deal. You know, I never knew how big of a deal eyelashes were <laughs> until just until the last couple years. Oh my goodness. What a change. And I think I think that's it adorable that's a fun afternoon project don't you think <laughs> a cute little raccoon so now guys what I want you to do is finish up your raccoons and I want everybody to send me theirs and I'm going to be signing off pretty quick here but I just want to say thank you so much again for showing up today thank you for understanding and um and we are going to do the moose next, so this will be a fun trifecta of woodland creatures to do, uh, to hang on your walls together. And um, that about does it. So yeah, that's the difference. That's the boy raccoon. Girl raccoon. <laughs>
not too big of a difference, but boy, girl. And maybe her eyelashes could be just a little bit bigger. And hopefully this was enough time for dinner that everybody could chill out and get an art project done. Um, I'm wishing you all the best. Everybody stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, I will be seeing you soon. Um, I'm not sure when, but very soon. Signing off. Have a great day, everybody. I hope you had a good time. Okay, bye.